Hey everybody, Chris with Coalition Gaming here and I've got a video for you guys. Everybody likes and maybe wants a stream deck. Anybody that's getting into streaming or is it super into macros or anything like that, but specifically streaming. So today I'm going to show you a free alternative that does basically the same thing. Let's get into it. So a bit of searching on finding something that I could use like a stream deck, but I, you know, I only stream once a week, maybe a little bit more if there's enough free time. I couldn't really justify the price. So I wanted to see what I could do that would simulate what the stream deck does for you know, a cheap solution, just like many other people, streamers on a budget, or just people who don't stream a lot and don't see too much value in something like that. It's 150, 160 bucks for the full, the full version or 100 bucks for the mini version. And, uh, well, it, and while it is an awesome device, don't get me wrong, it's kind of cool to be able to come up with a free alternative and Touch Portal has done that for you guys. So I'm gonna walk you guys through beginning to end as far as installing it on your computer, your phone or tablet or anything like that, and then getting it set up for your OBS. My favorite thing though about Touch Portal is it is both iOS and Android compatible. If you have an old Android phone, or an old iPhone, anything like that, or a tablet, Android tablet, or a uh, iPad, anything like that, lying around, that could be used as your Stream Deck alternative, which is freaking awesome. I actually still have an HP touchpad from so long ago, and it's a dual core with only like two gigs of RAM, I think, something like that, it's a 16 gig unit, and I managed to get it updated to Android 8.0 with some custom ROMing stuff. I got... <laughs> I got Touch Portal working on that and it works great. Got a big screen with big buttons on it. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using my phone. It's a Huawei Mate 9. And the uh, main reason I'm using that is because I can screen record really easy on it. So let's get down to the desktop. All right, everyone. So here we are at the desktop. We're at the Touch Portal website. That's www.touch-portal.com. You can see it up here. Also, it'll be linked in the description below along with everything else needed. So scroll on down to the middle area right here where it says get started. Click for your um, OS, so Windows or Mac. I guess no Linux support at the moment, but Windows or Mac, let's go with Windows. So it is downloading down here. It's a 70.8 megabyte download, not too big. Hopefully you have a good enough connection to download that quickly. Mine's already done, so let's go ahead and run through the installer. Okay, so the installer is up, it pops up. Go ahead and give it permission. Go ahead and, oh, I already have it up, so here we go. Next, 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 looks good. Finish, so then once you're done, you'll have the touch portal shortcut, I believe, on your desktop. No, not on your desktop. Go ahead and pull up your Windows thing, you'll see it there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a shortcut for it. I'm putting a shortcut on my desktop for it. Yeah, it's kind of a messy desktop, sorry about that. We're opening up Touch Portal. And here we are, and I already had a previous profile set up. This, so this is nice, I don't have to <laughs> redo the stuff that I had set up prior to this because I had uninstalled it before this for you guys to run through the, uh, the tutorial here. Anyways, so, Another thing, now that we have this installed, is we're gonna get the OBS WebSocket plugin. So just go ahead and search that, OBS WebSocket. You'll be, the first result right here, OBS WebSocket, and uh, Remote Control of OBS Studio made easy. Go ahead and download that. So we're gonna download the Windows installer, so we see this right here, Windows installer. Now that's downloading down there, 2.2 megabytes, nothing crazy. Let's go ahead and run that installer. English, accept, already exists. Yep, let's go ahead and install that. All right, so that is now installed as well. Boom. Okay, so here we are at Touch Portal on the desktop and I went ahead and cleared out a few of what I had set up prior to this so I can run through on the tutorial with you guys. So I'm gonna go here, click one of these empty boxes, call it main gaming and main gaming would be my main gaming scene so i'm going to click plus you see here streamlabs obs has its integration in there now xsplit is in there obs okay so we're going to go with regular obs since i have my uh my obs studio so i'm going to go ahead and open that up stick that in the other window actually i'll put it side by side to this so that way you guys can see what's going on 
So here we are, I'm going to make the main gaming scene since I'm making the buttons to change from scene to scene right now to demonstrate that. So I'm going to hit the plus sign, go down to OBS, click scene selection. And now you see here, all my scenes are right here. So I'm going to go main gaming I click add and that's all I need to do. Now you see main gaming there. And uh, let's see here, main gaming there. I also want one for my talking screen. So I'm going to do talking screen. Then we hit the plus sign, go down to OBS, hit scene selection, and then pick talking. Then press add, save. It's just that easy to create the buttons to uh, to change scenes. Now I also want to change the color, just because I like to do that. And uh, what is that? No, not that color. <laughs> Where's my blue? There we go. That color. Now, and you can also turn off and on individual sources within those scenes. So it's not just for changing scenes. So here we are. I'm going to do my headbanging one. And I can't spell headbanging. So uh, that one, I can actually set pictures as button icons as well. So I'm going to do that from file. And it's on my desktop. Kind of a bit uh, old school looking interface here, but you know, it doesn't matter ultimately. So I'm on my desktop. I know I have the uh the it's a gif so i'm gonna pull that up the gif won't actually animate on the button but you still get an image out of it as you can see there and i'm going to put it to where it is full button size just like that so now i'm going to go down to here select obs go to source selection and you have to select the scene that you actually want to manipulate the source in. and this one it's the countdown so stream starting countdown and it's called head banging just how i have it configured in obs and, and there you go, just like that. Pushing on that will toggle it off and on. So that is my full loadout of scenes. Now, if we're looking at what you can do with Touch Portal, just like Stream Deck, hitting that plus sign, first, you can have multiple actions happen with a, with the press of a button and then you can order the action with the arrow keys here but you can start an application you can go to specific pages you can have buttons on touch portal simulate specific key presses so i guess that'd be good macro stuff for building with like uh, playing fortnite or something you can start timers open new websites you can just have text typed out if you want to end a game and just do like gg something or other tap that and there you go you can uh, play and stop audio within it so you can turn it into a media control as well you can have specific windows functions in there like volume up volume down media okay back to more media control sort of stuff so that's kind of cool and then your obvious OVA, obs xsplit and streamlab obs stuff so you can start and stop recording with it uh you can start and stop streaming uh, manipulate individual sources and manipulate individual scenes toggle all that stuff set volume increase volume decrease volume that's nice x split you could uh do all the same thing more or less start stop everything's there streamlabs same thing more or less yep a little bit more simple compared to what's available through obs and xsplit but yeah so there we go so that's the basic loadout let's go to the phone now so here we are at my home screen. I'm going to go over to the Play Store. And from the Play Store, we're going to look for Touch Portal. There, uh, there it is, Touch Portal by Rills. So go ahead and install that app. And uh, small app, 2.33 megabytes. Shouldn't even need Wi-Fi for that one. So we're going to open that up. And you see here, to get started, we need to make a connection to your computer. To make a connection to, with your computer, we need to download the Touch Portal desktop software. Already done, we did that first no big deal install software once you have it downloaded you have to install it yep watch it through there and there are two multiple touch portal desktop like running on your network you have manually set up your connection now it will try to manually find it and i don't know why it says i have multiple not a big deal so we're going to do manual and all you have to do when it's in manual is type the uh, the IP address that Touch Portal shows you in the bottom left corner. That's the IP address of your computer. This can change because most of the time on a traditional network setup that is not too specifically configured, you guys are going to have a dynamic IP address, which means turning off your computer can possibly change this the next time you turn it on. Just something you have to pay attention when you launch Touch Portal. So it's 192.168.29.200. And I'm just going to put the 200 there. Port says 8888. I have that already set here. We're going to click finish. And here we go. Boom. And as you can see on my screen, it's all there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and refresh that. As you can see, it's still connected. And uh, if I turn my phone sideways, it also goes sideways. So I can go ahead and set this down in front of me and set down in front of me, hands free here. Now I'm going to reach down and I'm going to press, let's say I change scenes, as you can see on, on, the, on my desktop, I'm going to change scenes to the countdown screen. And look at that switched on over to the countdown scene now this is where i did the source that could be toggled off and on so i'm going to be tapping that repeatedly and you'll see the source go off and on and on and off and on and off so that's pretty cool if you have individual input sources configured like uh, microphones and webcams and all that all that stuff is able to be turned off and on as a source selection as well so you can even do a mic mute button if your mic isn't a default microphone in obs that's kind of neat. Uh, so I'm continuing to, to go through there. I can do my stinger intro. We can go to full cam and it's probably just going to show something with X play or it's blank. Sure. Whatever back to main gaming. So this is working exactly like the basic functionality. Most people get a stream deck for, and this is absolutely free. So that's Touch Portal. Hopefully you guys liked it. It's awesome that it's free. It's awesome that it could do all this stuff. It still has the majority of the functionality of what a Stream Deck does. It's, again, it's just awesome that it's free. You can do what you can do with the $160 unit, but for free in this case. How many times do I gotta say it? I hope you guys liked this video, found it helpful, informative, or anything like that. Please consider subscribing if you did. This is Chris with Coalition Gaming. Check out our other videos. It'll be linked right over here. Subscribe, like I mentioned, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Oh, also, feel free to throw some questions down in the comments below. And uh, if there's a solution like this that you guys are using that isn't Touch Portal, let me know. I'd love to look at it. If you've got a Stream Deck, did you guys find it worth it? All right, see ya.